everyone and welcome to your last demonstration video for Chemistry 124 for this semester. This video is going to be about Practical 5, which is about reaction kinetics. So, some reactions occur quite quickly, whereas other reactions can occur very slowly. This means that different reactions occur at different rates. So, in today's practical, you will be determining the rate of the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and iodide. In particular, you will be determining the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide due to potassium iodide in an acidic medium. So you will be required to determine P and Q, the exponents in your reaction rate equation, as well as the reaction rate constant K. And exactly how to do this is described in your practice. So there are two different equations involved in this practical and you will determine the values for the two exponents in the rate equation P and Q as well as the rate constant K by linking different equations as explained in your practical manual. The aim of this experiment is to determine the rate of a reaction in which hydrogen peroxide is reduced and potassium iodide is oxidized. This will be done by becoming familiar with different apparatus, plotting and interpreting graphs, and by becoming familiar with the rate of a reaction and its rate law. You will need four burettes, one for each of the different chemicals you will be using. One 10 milliliter pipette, one 200 milliliter volumetric flask, starch solution, five 100 milliliter beakers, and a stopwatch and you may also use the stopwatch function on your cell phone if you don't have an actual stopwatch. During this practical you must work in pairs. First collect a pipette filler, then collect H2SO4 in a 200 milliliter volumetric flask. Collect your Na2S2O3, potassium iodide, deionized water and hydrogen peroxide straight into the four burettes. Be careful not to overfill the burettes or to spill the reagents. First, rinse each burette out with the solution that it is to contain. Then fill the burettes, set them up on the retort stands and mark them clearly. Each pair of students will be required to accurately record the time between the addition and the sudden color change. Record the temperature of the laboratory as accurately as possible. Part 1 involves the determination of the order of the reaction with respect to the hydrogen peroxide. Firstly, label four clean, dry 100 milliliter beakers as beakers 1 to 4. Rinse the 10 milliliter pipette with two small portions of H2SO4 solution. Each of these small portions should be discarded in the appropriate waste bins. Use the 10 milliliter pipette to add the required volume of H2SO4 into each beaker. These volumes can be found in table 1. Rinse the pipette with deionized water. Then add the required volume of Na2S2O3 to each beaker from the first burette. Add the required volume of potassium iodide to each beaker from the second burette. Add the starch solution to each beaker. Read steps 14 through 16 completely before continuing. The mixture of reagents prepared in steps 6 to 12 will not react until hydrogen peroxide is added. Take the clean small beaker and add the required volume of deionized water from the third burette and further the required amount of hydrogen peroxide from the fourth burette. Take the volumes as reported in table one. 
operate your stopwatch, press start the moment you have added the contents of the small beaker containing the hydrogen peroxide in one quick movement to beaker 1. Swirl the flask rapidly to ensure thorough mixing and then leave it. Be alert. Note and record the exact time at which the dark color appears. The color change, the color change appears suddenly throughout the entire solution at the same time. Calculate the elapsed time and repeat steps 14 through 16 with beakers 2, 3 and 4 using the volumes of water and hydrogen peroxide as given in table 1. Do not attempt to add the hydrogen peroxide to all four beakers simultaneously as you won't be able to determine the end point of each reaction accurately. Part 2 of this practical involves repeating this experiment using the volumes that are found in Table 2. In summary, the purpose of Practical 5 is to help you understand the concepts of reaction rates and determining the rate laws by using chemical reactions.